tongue. He gives grace and glory. He sets the captive free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share with you something the Lord gave me months and months ago, maybe a year ago now. I want to preach about the real war. The real war. You're in a battle. And it's not over yet because you're still alive. As long as you're alive, the devil's going to be scratching for your soul. Making a bid. Attacking. And as long as you are, let's put a screen down, put our sermon, our outline up. Praise God. As long as you're alive, the enemy's going to be after you. There's no way around it. You say, well, I just won't participate. Then you immediately go as a prisoner of war to the devil, and you're waiting on hell to meet you from beneath. There's no escaping this. There's no getting around it. There's no Switzerland that says we're not going to participate. There's no neutral parties. People either love Jesus or they hate him. Amen? You see all of these students at these Ivy League colleges that are demonstrating for Hamas, and they're all saying, these Jews should be driven into the sea. They are squatters. They took over the country in 1948. They have no right to be there. That's just pure and simple evil. And they don't even know that they're captive by the devil. They don't even understand that this is a war between good and evil. Jesus said in the last days, things are going to be so turned around that people will call evil good and good evil. And that's where we're at right now. That's where we're at. So I just want to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, if you have your Bibles. We're going to read very familiar scripture, verses 3 through 5. And I want to talk to you today about the real war that's going on. Amen. The screen is not too clear and it's a little small in the print, but I'll still point to the necessary points during the sermon with my laser printer. My laser printer, my laser pointer. And it's real powerful and it works really well. You see how good it works. And it's also good for waking up sleeping saints. So. If we get any of you that nod off, I'll just shine this on you and you'll feel a light. You'll think it's God, but it's just a laser. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 10, three through five. For though we walk or live in the flesh, we do not, are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself against the true knowledge of God, we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah the anointed one. Father, help the Holy Spirit to take swift wing and to help me today. Help the people to hear and receive what the Lord wants to give to them. Strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. You can be seated. I want to give you a understanding about what warfare is all about. The Bible's very clear that in Paul's writings here that it's not flesh and blood. So people are not the enemy. I feel sorry for those poor Palestinians that are living in the occupied territory. They have 24 hours to get out. 90% of those people are harmless and are not terrorists. But they're being clumped in there because they've got to go in and root out the terrorists. But 
I feel sorry for those people because flesh and blood is not the enemy. Even when flesh and blood rises up as the enemy, it's not really people. It's the devil who has deceived people. He's a great deceiver. And the Bible declares in the last days, the spirit of deception is going to grow. It's not going to get less. It's going to get greater. And the days will be shortened lest the elect be deceived. The very elect get deceived because there's such spirits. When Jesus gave in Matthew the first sign of the last days, the first thing that he mentioned is be warned that no man deceive you. The spirit of deception is manifold and growing ten times over and people are being deceived and it's the spirit of deception. So thank God we got a church here that loves the word of God and preaches the whole counsel of God and stands for righteousness and we do not shy away from the hard scriptures. We do not say that some of it's not relevant and throw it out the door, but we embrace all 66 books. All of them are divine. All of them are God-breathed. So don't let anybody deceive you in this day of deception. Cling to that which is good. Hold to the truth of God. And there are, is a war that's going on, and it's going on in three levels. Three different levels. The first is the earth right here. So all of this represents planet terra firma, our earth. This is the first level of the war. Why? Here we are on the earth in the flesh. How many of you are on the earth? How many of you are in the flesh? Then you're a target. Amen. I never saw dead people set up before. Some of you didn't even respond. But anyway, here, here is, the, here is the, the first level of war. And Paul said that this war for the people of God does not involve confrontation in flesh and blood. It involves spiritual war. Everyone say spiritual. spiritual. Amen. And so we see that the second sphere of the battle is the second heaven right here. Here's the second heaven. This is the atmosphere directly above the earth that goes up for, you know, several hundred miles. It goes up above the earth. This is known as the second heaven that Paul wrote about, and it is involving spiritual warfare because this is the place where, where Satan's kingdom is set up. He has demons, he has hierarchies, he has principalities, he has powers and rulers. There's three descriptors about the war that's going on above our heads in the second heaven. What is it? It is principalities. It is powers. It is rulers of this world. And this area right above the earth is the area where Lucifer has his kingdom set up and he fights and he rules coming down, coming down, coming down on the earth. From where? From the principalities and powers of darkness. My uncle one time, uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he had a dream and he dreamed about the coming of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit was walking with him on a dark mountain path and the sun was setting. And he said to the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? He said, the church age is about to close. And suddenly the sun disappeared and they were in gross darkness. And immediately he said there were flashes of light in this area above the earth. It looked like lightning, 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 streaking all across the heavens. And he said to the Holy Spirit, what is that? He said, those are principalities and powers of darkness that are temporarily fleeing the heavens because they're not in control, Jesus is. And he said, why are they fleeing? He said, watch and you'll see. And suddenly he heard a sound like a trumpet. 
But it wasn't just from one source. It enveloped the whole earth. And he said the whole earth was filled with that sound of a mighty crescendo, a mighty sound of a horn that was blowing. And it filled the earth. And he said immediately he felt himself going up. He said, I didn't feel a jerk. I didn't feel something like being shot out of a gun. He said, I just felt like an elevator going up. But I knew I was going at a tremendous rate of speed because I looked around and I could already see the earth behind me. And I thought, wow, I'm going so fast. And he heard an angel in the heavens cry, time is no more for you, only for them. And he pointed to the earth. So he said, I felt time break off me like a heavy garment. And I was in eternity instantly with the Lord. And he said, I saw people on both sides of me, all around me. And they were going up with me at the same rate of speed. And they were screaming and crying and rejoicing and saying, he has come, he has come, he has come. Our Lord, he has come, our Lord has come. We're going, we're going to be with him. And he said, they were rejoicing and shouting and praising God. And he said, I felt myself go right in to eternity and then he woke up but the point I wanted to make about his story is the principalities and powers there's coming a day when Jesus is going to take the earth back and he's going to take the heavenlies back the second heaven he's going to take it all back and of course the third heaven up here is his anyway this is where he lives. This is God's home. This is the four square city of God. This is where God rules the universe from his third heaven. This is not a place of conflict. There is no war going on here now. There was a war in God's home when Lucifer revolted and a third of the angels were cast down to the earth. Jesus said, I described this thing and it was like a streak of lightning that Satan was thrown out from God's home and he hit the earth and he hit so hard. Talk about a fastball. God can throw a fastball. He threw the devil so hard he went 4,000 miles down into the bowels of the earth. Somebody say amen. How do you know it's 4,000 miles? That's the center of the earth. How do you know that you go down there where, where, where hell is? Because Bill Weiss said the Lord told him, you're 3,800 miles under the surface of the earth. So he was 3,800 miles when he was put in hell by the Lord for 23 minutes and shown what hell is really like. So I can tell you that when God threw Lucifer out, he, he threw him hard. And he hit in the middle of the earth, and he's still there. But he still has access to this heavenly realm directly above the earth, and he still wages war. This is where the war comes. This is why you get discouraged right here. The devil shooting these fiery darts at all of God's people. He's got you earmarked. He knows your house address. He knows what car you drive, and he's after you. I can tell you, he's after you. He never gets tired. He never gets weary. He never takes a day off. He is the eternal enemy of God's people, and he thinks he's going to win you. He thinks thinks he can talk you out of salvation. He thinks he can distract you with other things of the world and you'll get so caught up you'll forget about church and forget about God. And he hopes he can take your life during that time. But God hears the prayer of his people. And people that are praying for family members, they're surrounded by the power of the Holy Spirit and they're convicted and God is working big time in their life. And so this is going on. This is the eternal war right here. And it's going to be called to a halt when Jesus comes back to collect his bride down here on the earth. Hallelujah. He's going to come. Now the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour, not the son of man even, not even the angels, when the Lord is going to call and he's going to say to his son, today's the day. Get your bride, get, your, get yourself ready because you're ready to take the bride and he's going to step out into this second realm and the whole earth is going to be filled with that sound. Then all the saints of God that are dead and alive will be caught up instantly, instantly to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with God the Lord. I want you to understand the third heaven. I want you to understand the second heaven, the place of conflict, and the earth that you are on. The more spiritual minded you can be in your walk with God, the more you'll understand these things. People that don't 
flow in the Holy Spirit. They don't have the Spirit of God. This is all carnal to them. They don't understand it. They can't figure it out. Why? All they got to go on is just what's here on the earth. And if they can't see it, then they can't have it. Amen. Amen. And so we see that this is where the battle rages. Satan is fighting against us. Now, what do we have? What do we have? We have a situation that's desperate. Paul talked about perilous times shall come in the last days. Men shall be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. And, and they, shall, they shall walk in unholy and unclean ways. And perilous times, I searched it out, and it's the same word as in Matthew 8, 28 through 32 where the Bible describes two men that lived in the tombs and there was a road around the Sea of Galilee, but nobody could pass by because there was a big graveyard there and these two men were full of a legion of demons and they would come exceedingly fierce out of those tombs and attack people and they had supernatural strength and people were scared to death and so people did not make the loop all the way around the Sea of Galilee in that day. They would go other ways. Nobody passed by. It says nobody passed by. But one day, Hey, Jesus said to the disciples, let's get in the boat and go over to the other side. I'm going to mess with the devil a little bit. And he got in the boat and went to the other side. And immediately, two men full of legions jumped out at him. And what did he do? He cast them out instantly. What happened? People gained access around the road of the Sea of Galilee. But the Bible describes the perilous that Paul talked about with the same Hebrew or the same Greek word as in Matthew 28. These two men who were exceedingly fierce. It's the same Greek word. What are, why do I say that? Because the days that are here are going to be exceedingly fierce. Oh, I'm just looking for everything to get back to normal like it was. It's never going. It's going to get worse and worse. It's going to get exceedingly fear. Just like two men full of a legion of demons jumping out at you. And they have supernatural strength. And nobody can stop them. People couldn't hurt them. They terrorized Galilee for many, many years till Jesus went across the boat. Aren't you glad he's still in control and he still has all power in heaven and earth? And one word from the Lord, the Son of God, demons run the other way. Hallelujah! They said, why have you come to torment us before the time? Jesus, thou Son of God, we know who you are. He said, shut up and come out. And they came out. Where can we go? He said, I don't care. Don't send us back to the pit. You know why? If they get sent back to hell, the devil torments them because they messed up on their job and their assignment. Oh, let us go somewhere. Let us go into these pigs. Okay, go on the pigs. They ran down, jumped off a cliff, killed themselves. What were Jews doing with pigs to start with? It's not kosher. You're not supposed to be eating them. <laughs> I've wondered about that, but... Anyway, and so this is describing the day that we're in, exceedingly fierce. Everybody say it, exceedingly fierce. You want to look around in America, see what's happening? Exceedingly fierce. And it's going to get worse. Put your hand up. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's going to get worse. Hallelujah. hallelujah. It's going to get worse. We're not afraid. We've got a mighty God with one word who can re rebuke the devil. It's going to get worse. Thank God it's going to get worse. Somebody say amen. amen. I heard a preacher friend of mine say this, and I thought it was good. He said, the reason we're finding, the reason we're finding so much demonic activity is because God is coming down. He's descending, and these powers and principalities and rulers, they're feeling the heat, and the devil's in a panic. He's in a panic. That's why we're seeing so much evil that's growing on the earth. God's 
coming down. So when you see these things approaching, wickedness, wickedness, gross darkness, unbelievable things. I never thought I'd live to see the day we're in. When they take three-year-olds and do sex change operations on them. Little children. They don't even know where the sandbox is. They don't even know how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you're telling them to make a decision of where you want to be an opposite sex and that nobody can stop it because the government's behind it. This is a wicked, wicked day. But what did God say? When you see these things approaching, government's about to change. Power is about to change. Glory is coming for God's people. Come on, somebody be excited this morning. Somebody be happy this morning. Hallelujah. What do we have for this? All this evil that's proliferating on the earth. The fierce day we're in. We have prayer in the Holy Ghost. We have the bedrock of the Word of God, which is sharp and powerful. Amen. We have a safe place in the Word and in the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. We have all that God wants. And I love to think about how the Lord gives us the victory. Amen. I wish I could find victory with this pointer. It's given up on me. We're here. You get the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The devil really has problems with people that exercise what God's given to them. If you read the word four days a week, your life is going to change. We've got those cards over there to testify. And we're all going to testify the first Sunday in November how much our lives have changed. And if you exercise tongues, you pray in the spirit, the language of men and of angels, and it cuts principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. They go, huh? What? Huh? And our prayer goes right up to the throne and comes right back from the throne and goes up to the throne and comes back from the throne and goes up to the throne and comes back from the throne and it's all in secret code and the devil is left standing with his hands in his pockets saying, I don't know how to attack. I don't know what's going on. The more you can pray in tongues, the stronger you're going to get. The more you should pray every day in tongues. Hallelujah. We're not Baptists. We're Pentecostal. Pray in the Spirit. If you don't want to pray in tongues, go to a church that doesn't believe in it. But we believe in it. We have it. Yes. Oh, do you think it's real? Listen, a person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person with an argument. Right. And you can argue against the Holy Ghost all you want to, but you come too late for this preacher. I've had it since I was 10 years old. Hallelujah. And I know it's power, and I know it's strength, and I know it works, and I know it, it does the job. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. It's a powerful thing to be filled with the Spirit. Use the power you've got. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, especially if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and you can go up in code and come back and go up in code. Living fire set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in other tongues as a spirit. We need to not apologize for the Holy Ghost. We need to not apologize for praying in tongues. We need to have people that will stand up for Pentecost and stand up for the Holy Ghost and will exercise the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is called an advocate in the Greek, which means an attorney with stand, who stands with someone who's on trial. An attorney who stands. An attorney who speaks. An attorney who's smarter than we are. That's why you pay them $400 an hour because they're smarter than you are and they can figure things out and defend you. The Holy Ghost is our advocate. Jesus said when you're hauled into court, don't worry about what you'll say for the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost will give you the words in that very hour. Somebody say amen. 
The Holy Ghost will guide you and lead you. Like my poor dad that got in Haiti and didn't have a cell phone to call this pastor. It was a Haitian pastor. And he was supposed to meet him at the airport and he wasn't there. And my dad didn't know what to do. It's a city of a million people and they don't have any street signs. No names on the streets. And my dad's over there by himself and he doesn't know what to do. So he starts praying in the Holy Ghost. And he, he feels like the Lord says, get on this top top and ride it. So he jumps on this thing. Costs about 20 cents to ride the top top. And it's just an open truck. You know, and he just jumps up on this truck and rides. And when you want to stop, you ring a bell back there and they stop. So he rode it for a while and the Holy Ghost said, stop here. So he rings a bell and he jumps off, walks over to the street and starts walking down the street. He says, now Lord, you got to help me because I'm, I'm stranded. I don't know what to do. I can't find anybody. And the Lord just keeps speaking to him. And he's walking down the street and pretty soon a guy approaches him. And my dad says, you know, he says, sir, do you speak English? And he said, yes. He said, I'm a pastor from America and I'm looking for a certain pastor here. I'm supposed to preach a conference, but I missed them and I don't know where they're at and I don't know. And he says, what's his name? And he said, Dio Kashabu. And when he says that, this man starts going. <laughs> and starts speaking in tongues. And my dad says, what's wrong with you? He said, know him. He's my brother. <laughs> Out of a million people, God led him on a top top to go meet the brother of the pastor. The Somebody say amen. amen. What will God do for you? Through the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Exercise the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ask God in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Every car I buy, every decision I make, every financial decision, I pray. And I leave it in the hands of God. And I say, if you don't want us to have a car, this car, then block it. If you want me, help me to find the deal that I need to have. Somebody say amen. amen. The Holy Ghost leads God's people. Hallelujah! Practice the Holy Ghost! Speak in tongues. Talk to God. Find out what's on God's mind. Let him lead you and guide you. Let him show you the path he has for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Shanda bakada na na ba sanda, sharanda ba yanda na na ba handa. Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Yea, na ba kanda na 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 ba sanda ba yanda na 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 ba baka. Oh, rianda bo ye. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The real war is going on. The real war is going on. Let me ask you, are you fighting it? Have you laid down and just become acquiescent? Have you given up the struggle? Are you letting the devil roll over you and your family? Oh, I challenge you. Hallelujah. I want to close with this thought. There was no victory for 40 days in Israel when a man named Goliath came out on a hill and curse them by his God. He said, let one of you that's man enough to stand against me come out and fight me. And if you kill me, we'll serve you. If I kill him, all of Israel will serve the Philistine nation. He ranted and raved for 40 days. And it was quiet as it could be from the side of Israel. Saul in all of his armor 
all the mighty men that he had, all the soldiers, they all stood in their tents. They all couldn't talk. They were mute. The devil got their tongues. Has the devil got your tongue? Are you so beat down that you can't stand against him? But there was one. And God just needs one. <laughs> well, pray for me. I'm the only one at work that's saved. That's all God needs is one. I'm the only one in my family that's saved. That's all God needs is one. Just one. God had one that he had been training for real war, that he had been training in godly principles, that he had been teaching the things of God, and he already killed a lion and a bear. He had already been at war in the wilderness, herding sheep. Isn't it amazing? The lowest job on the farm, the most menial task was herding sheep. And David was doing the least and the last and the lowest of the work on the ranch. But yet he was exalted to the highest. Like Joseph was 12 years in prison. But he came out of the prison in one day and stood in the palace of Pharaoh and interpreted a dream. There's coming a day when we're going to be declared by God. We're going to be presented to the world. We're going to show up with power and glory and the devil is going to get his self beaten. Amen. Amen. David showed up. And when David showed up, something happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until someone comes along who knows where the real war is, there won't be any victory. Why don't you quit fighting it in the flesh? Why don't you quit fighting it on the phone? Why don't you quit fighting it through people? Why don't you quit reacting? The devil taps you on the head and you always do the same thing. You react in the flesh. Why don't you go to the Lord and pray in the Holy Ghost? God will help you to destroy David was incredulous. He said, I cannot believe this. A whole army standing here and this fool is out here cursing God every day. Is there not a God of Israel? Is there not a cause that's worth fighting for? Isn't there something that's bigger than you that you ought to be a, far, a part of? Amen. Boy, I tell you, David said, give me this king uncircumcised Philistine defying the armies of the living God. Saul said, take my armor because it's done you so good. You've been so successful with it. Cowering like a little baby, like a little girl in your tent, hiding out. Saul, you're taller than everybody. You're supposed to show up with victory. Come on, it's time for God's people to show up. It's time for us to put on the armor and to show up against the devil. It's time to tell that addiction you're going to bow to the cross. It's time to tell those spirits that harass you all the time and keep you defeated. I know a God who can give me victory. And David went out and killed Goliath and cut his head off with his own sword. Hallelujah! That's why I don't own a gun. I'll never own a gun because I don't want somebody to shoot me with it. I can't think of anything worse than buying a gun and buying the bullets and then giving the handle to somebody to kill me. Well, they got killed with his own gun. Isn't that amazing? He bought the ammo and they killed him. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll trust the Lord. And they get road rage and come out there after me. I'll say, shoot, I'm ready to go to heaven. That bunch in Bellflower, they'll have to get there on their own. I'm going to glory. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I'm in heaven and you're stuck here. You can't threaten a real Christian with heaven. It just doesn't work. Somebody say amen. And David destroyed him. And he killed his brothers. <laughs> And he devastated their nation. And there was peace for over 25 years because David went after the enemy. 
You can have peace, but you got to fight for it. You can have peace, but you got to stand up spiritually. You can have peace, p- peace in your life and victory, but you got to turn the internet off and go to seeking God. Victory's ours. Let's everybody stand.